BD5 pilot with you out at the Hillsboro hangar on a Saturday morning and uh, been out here doing some more work on uh, how that engine is going to, uh, that engine area is going to get sealed up. And uh, so how the bulkhead, how the covers and the uh, NACA ducts that are going to bring the, the air in. So I've been getting some questions. People are kind of curious, you know, why, why you're going to uh, the trouble of trying to use the NACA ducts rather than just the traditional scoops and stuff that uh, go on the aircraft. So uh thought I'd give you a little visual demonstration because, yeah, as uh, some of you know, I've been researching these things since the early 70s. So if you looked at pictures of the BD-5 before, you kind of noticed it's got a small frontal area. So when they were doing the uh, wind tunnel tests and doing the work with the aerodynamics, they actually figured out what uh, I think the term is called a flat plate frontal area. BD-5B is 2.4 square feet. That's 2.4 square feet right there. That's 18 and a half inches by 18 and a half inches square. So this represents how much air the entire aircraft, uh, how much frontal area is pushing through the air. So your power has to overcome this amount, which isn't very much. And, uh, and so uh, when I was originally planning the uh, aircraft, I was looking at a hearth, three-cylinder hearth, uh, water-cooled engine that uh, put out 90 horsepower, really intoxicating to think of that much power, and it was still under 100 pounds, supposedly, with, uh, uh, with uh, the radiator and everything, probably would have ended up being over 100 pounds, but uh, I had to run a scoop, had to run a cooling scoop for that radiator to uh, operate, and so I, I did. I tracked down this aerodynamically designed scoop. One of my earlier videos shows me working on fitting this to the underbelly, which is where this is gonna go. So we take this scoop and add that to that 2.4 square feet. You can see how much percentage this is gonna add in drag. So a lot of that 90 horsepower is gonna get eat up just pushing this thing through the air. Now at lower speed, so when you're down near stall speed or climb out speeds and things like that, not near as much of a factor. Those of you who uh, who have taken flight training, especially work with multi-engine and, and uh, some of your, your faster complex aircraft, you know that uh, when you have to do a botched landing, uh, go around or a missed approach, and you're cleaning the plane back up for, for climbing back out of an area, the gear's not the big factor. You want to get the flaps out of there because the flaps are a high drag item, but you want to um, focus on flying the aircraft. And that gear doesn't make a big difference when you're down around 90 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour. It's, it's going to be just a, a few miles an hour. So uh, at low speed, it's not a big factor. When you get up to high speed, though, you get up to 150, 200 miles an hour, that drag's going to make a huge factor and, and slow the plane down quite a bit. So that's why that scoop ends up being something that uh, I think would really have a, a, a large effect on the aircraft. So uh, now I'm going to take you back to the uh, engine area where I'm getting ready to do a, a crazy test. So I fitted the uh, left side cover onto the engine with that duct, and then I've uh, made a little arrangement so that uh, little airspeed indicator can go under that inlet. And, uh, and so I'll be able to measure how much air is going inside. Now what I've done in the engine compartment itself is taken the uh, styrofoam and built out what that firewall will be and sealed that off with some tape as well so this is all set up to uh, seal that area off and i've got another engine cover put together with the uh, NACA duct in it and then back here i've built a little plate that allows me to have a bolt in the center and move that propeller and uh, i've got my big old milwaukee drill arranged with a long extension so I can get that turning potentially 900 RPM, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll see. And I'm just going to keep a distance from that because I don't want that puppy to break on me. And then I'm going to take the uh, heat gun, set it at a setting more likely to emulate what uh, an idle or low RPM setting would uh, have on here. And, uh, and use a little tube I've made to drive that into the uh, exhaust jet venturi. So I'm, I'm getting as close as I can to simulating the conditions that... Uh, this aircraft would be in when that engine's running and then measure the airspeed as it enters that uh, NACA duct and measure it on both sides and then take a measurement back here at that little uh, where that exhaust jet Venturi exits the aircraft and uh, find out what kind of calculations I get. So be setting that up next.
Well, I can tell you that uh, best I could do is about 4.8 knots uh, shown on that, but uh, I don't think the uh, airspeed indicator that I'm trying to use is the correct tool to uh, use for this. And the next factor I'm getting are, are two things. The heat gun just does not put out the uh, flow of air, so the volume of air is not what it would be out of the exhaust. And then even using that big drill, I'm just not getting the RPM that uh, is really going to be what idle would be like. And uh, and so it's going to be one of those things where you just got to do more testing and then get the engine to engine ready to start and then uh, do some testing with the actual engine there so we can meter and see what uh, how, how it really works. So uh, for now, BD5 Pilot is out. I'm going to be back out here tomorrow to work on a couple more things, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Thanks for following me on the journey. BD5 Pilot out.